whether it was a book or a video or a talk or a pitch, words can really make a massive difference in in your business, in your life, in your relationships, and in your profit. Unconventional Life, the show where I interview successful entrepreneurs, creatives, and thought leaders on how they earn their living in non-traditional ways. We will explore how they took the path less traveled, what their revenue model looks like, and why they are prioritizing their passion over their paycheck. I'm your host, Jewel Schroeder. Unconventional Life, welcome. This is your host, Jewel Schroeder, tuning in today from Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. Today's guest is joining me from Vancouver, Canada. I have got Aurora Winter in the house. Aurora, are you ready to take us down the path less traveled? Absolutely. That's where I like to hang out, the path less traveled. Yeah, super excited to have this woman on the show. Not only is she in one of my favorite cities in the whole world, in Vancouver, Canada, she is doing some really incredible things combining, you know, the use of writing, you know, being an author, you know, your award-winning best-selling author, also successful serial entrepreneur, media trainer, and the creator of the Spoken Author Method, which we're going to talk about in a little bit on Conventional Affairs on how with her recent book, literally within 90 days, generated over $250,000 of new revenue. So if you've been looking for a it. Stay tuned for that as well. And I also know you are the founder of Same Page Publishing. And what an interesting background. You left your lucrative career as a TV, TV executive to, you know, to move into this full-time author training and entrepreneurial lifestyle and really using books, you know, as a means for storytelling. Um, you know, for business and different things like that. And so I know uh, you've helped a lot of clients giving TEDx talks, you know, appearing on TV, raising venture capital, you've won awards, all different kinds of things. So we're excited to dive in and hear about your latest book, Turning Words into Wealth and also Marketing Fast Track. So welcome to the show, Aurora. Fill in any gaps that I might have left out and give oh, us you were, your first life. <laughs> you were very thorough there. Yeah, I look forward to giving, uh, giving the listeners some tips about how they can turn their words into wealth or pivot. And, you know, just basically I found every time in my life when I hit a dead end, the breakthrough always came from communication, whether it was a book or a video or a talk or a pitch, words can really make the massive difference in in your business, in your life, in your relationships and in your profit. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to dive into all of that. And, you know, I'd love to just start with your story and your journey a little bit. You know, there you were, this lucrative, you know, career as a TV executive, you know, and I know this was decades ago, so it's been some time, right, since you've made that first pivot, at least. And I'm sure there were pivots even before that pivot <laughs> that that came about. Um, and just to actually go full time into this world of author and what might seem like a creative pursuit. And what was it like for you, even at the time, or even if you look at some of the snapshots, you know, through your life when you've made some of these pivots from the, you know, maybe quotes, predictable, stable or predictable outcome into something <laughs> that allowed more creativity and ultimately invention to come through? Well, I've been an entrepreneur my whole life, so I didn't ever buy into the, I believe, fallacy of secure being a paycheck. And I would suggest that everybody lean into, you know, what's the next invention? What's the next thing for you? What's the next career, the next business, the next move? Um, So basically how it started, well, it's not how I started, but it's how you started the story. I was working as a film and television executive uh, writer producer. I was head of development for Canada's largest film and television production and distribution company, which at that time was Atlantis Films. So it was pretty cool. I got to go to the Con TV Festival and uh, was schmoozing with broadcasters and writers and stars and directors. So that was awesome. Mm-hmm. And then I did uh, I did something that probably most women could relate to. I fell in love. Ah, so I <laughs> I, had, I felt like I had to leave my job to uh, to start a business. This is my pattern. I don't know. It's maybe not. I need maybe need severe therapy. But I, <laughs> I fall in love and then I want to be with the person. So then I decide, oh, the logical thing to do is start a business with them. So I started a business with a partner I'd met at the Cannes Television Festival, actually. Mm. And he was also obviously in film and television. Uh, We started a business and we raised $5 million to launch that business, which was pretty cool. And even that story Well, besides the therapy part that I might need for always seeming (laughs) to start businesses with uh, men I fall in love with was that, you know, how did we raise that $5 million and go on to make eight films? It was really because I took a step back and went, okay, well, what 
can we offer that's unique and different? And how can we add more value? And so by answering the question, how can we add more value? I realized that if we set up the company a certain way, we would be able to provide access to Canadian grants and tax shelters and UK grants and tax shelters and Isle of Man financial benefits. And so by cobbling together a number of these different benefits, we were able to raise $5 million and that company went on to make eight feature films. The relationship did not last, so I moved <laughs> on to the next thing. But in that, in that story is something I'd love everybody to consider is what can you do to add more value, be distinct, or set yourself apart in, in the marketplace? Because that could be the key to success for you. It always was for me. <laughs> yeah. I love that. There's so much goodness and conventional affairs in that story. And I know this is just one example and you continue to do that, you know, over and over again in different ways. And, you know, I think even just the nature and the theme of pivots and transition and using your voice, what if you had to overcome or even confront personally, or whether it was from a mindset or whether it was a circumstance perspective, you know, to really allow yourself the permission to, to keep going. Cause I think a lot of times, you know, we have, whether it's our belief, whether it's our circumstance, whether it's a combination of both just to even go for it. And, um, you know, what I know in my own journey, I've had to overcome and look at several things to in order to allow, you know, that next level to emerge for myself. And how has that been for you? And, and what have you found out along the way? What haven't I had to overcome, I think, would be a more <laughs> accurate question. <laughs> well, I yeah. think the biggest thing I, uh, the biggest challenge I've had, although there were some recent challenges uh, with COVID, which we could get into, but the biggest challenge I had was when I was only 31 years old. I was a newlywed. I had a four-year-old son. I had, surprise, a business with my husband <laughs> <laughs> that it grew from nothing to a multi-million dollar business. And uh, life seemed like it was good and about to get better. My dream had always been to be a writer. I've been a writer since I was nine, but I had finally decided that our business was successful enough and that I could pursue, uh, pursue writing as a career. And I met Mel Gibson and Goldie Hawn and through various chance slash miraculous coincidences, I was actually being paid to <laughs> write my first screenplay, Eli's Lesson, which actually... Uh, was made into a, a TV movie and starred good old one arm push up Jack Palance. You might not know him because he's before your time, but anyway, yeah. he's pretty <laughs> cool. Um, anyway, so I thought life was great. I felt like I lived in this bubble of protection. And then my, my 33 year old husband died suddenly right in front of me. Wow. And I felt like my entire life had shattered and turned upside down. And I had no idea how I was ever going to recover. Or even if I wanted to, like it took all the wind out of my sails. He was my best friend. He was my business partner. He was my husband. He was the father of our four-year-old son. But I had to find a way to go on because my, you know, my son looked up to me like mommy was going to make everything all right. I'm like, okay, then how is mommy going to do that without a husband, without a business and uh, without a plan? So that was my first major major pivot, which led to me being in the film business eventually. Yeah. And, and so I share that story because no matter what, what I'm going through, what you're going through, what the listeners may be going through, there is a way through if you have a big enough reason why, and your reason why might be, you know, your four-year-old son or your 12-year-old daughter, or just because, you know, I, we need to find a reason why. And then as we move forward, things, things do unfold. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and, and they did unfold. And I'm sure they are did. continuing <laughs> to, <I> are continuing <laughs> to unfold. Exactly. Um, uh, <laughs> you know, I'd love to, uh, you know, just even talk about, you know, especially this, you know, the top 1% or even the top 4%, just how, you know, differently, um, how they do it differently to communicate powerfully. And then ultimately what's led your book, you know, turning your words into wealth, which even just, you know, as you're here with us, you know, talking today, there is a power and a confidence that I'm sure, you know, has taken some time to cultivate, or maybe it was natural and instinctive or whatever it might be, but tell us a little bit about the book, you know, turning words into wealth. And then also what you've noticed in being in some of these more elite circles, you know, some of the distinctions and differences that you found in some of those people to really communicate powerfully and ultimately more authentically. Mm. Oh, lots of questions in there. I just going to pack them all over. <laughs> just like, go, yeah. go for it. 
Um, well, what I've noticed about the most successful people, and I have had the honor and privilege of, of meeting quite a few very successful people. For example, Quentin Tarantino. I was uh, I was at a screening of uh, Django Unchained in his home, mm-hmm. uh, his home theater, which I don't know seated maybe. 15 people, something like that. And I was the only person who hadn't been involved in making the movie. So and he, I was sitting like, you know, just behind him where he could see me out of the corner of his eye, kitty corner. And every time I jumped or I gasped, I was like, he was noting, oh yeah, that worked. Okay. That worked. That worked. Okay. So what I've noticed about the most successful people is always rooted in communication. They have a way of sharing stories. Like I told you a story about Quentin Tarantino. It was a a specific moment and a specific story. And you will probably remember that more than if I had shared a bunch of seven steps to this or abstract principles of that. So as we all have the ability to open our mouths and say words, Mm -hmm. wouldn't it be smart to double down on that and find out what is this communication thing and how does it work anyway? What is the neuroscience of communication and how can I harness it to make a bigger difference and therefore be more successful? I think the other thing is the sequence does matter. The intention does matter. And the most successful people in my view, at least what I would define as success, their intention is, is uh, of high integrity or their intention is not just to line their pockets. Yes, there may be some exceptions of people, but I think that they'll get <laughs> bitten eventually by karma. So mm-hmm. I, you know, a lot of people ask me, you know, Aurora, how can I go on the TEDx stage? How can I be on TV? How can I, you know, t- speak to an, an audience of hundreds of people? Like, who wants to hear from me? It's a common, a common uh, thing that trips people up. And I think the question really is to ask, how can I make a difference? Because if you're focusing on you, you probably won't know what to say. But if you think, how could I contribute? How could I make a difference? How could I use this time to add value to the reader, to the listener, to the watcher? Then your self-consciousness will evaporate as you focus on that instead. So that's, that's a little tip I'd love people to, uh, to recall as well. So, yeah, so the 64-4 rule is something I talk about in my latest book, Turn Words Into Wealth. And what it is, is most people know about the 80-20 rule, the rule, the Pareto principle, which says that mathematically, it seems to be quite stable, this relationship between between things, the 80-20 relationship. So 20% of your effort will produce 80% of your results. Or if you want to look at it a negative way, 20% of your clients will give you 80% headache. So you just <laughs> fire the bottom 20%, <laughs> which is what Jim Pattison did when he was uh, selling cars. He always fired the bottom 10% or 20% every month. Anyway, back to the um, the principle to apply. So when I was recently pivoting after the pandemic, I looked at the 80-20 principle and I thought, okay, what 20% of clients or activities are bringing 80% of my my, uh, satisfaction and value? And in that 20% were all things that related to communication. But then the top people go go again and they think, okay, well, in that top 20% that I've already identified, what is the... 20% of that 20%. In other words, what are the 4% of activities that bring you the bulk of your results or 64% if the math is true, 80% of 80%. And that actually applies. So if you think about somebody like Steve Jobs, you know, he practiced for three weeks before the Apple launches, three entire weeks. He was running a huge company, had lots of things to do. Why was it worth three weeks of his time? Because practicing how to communicate, nailing his stories, getting it nice and tight, clear and compelling, created an avalanche of sales. So how often do we shoot ourselves in the foot by working late at night or working hard and long, but not working smart. And I would suggest that the smart is in that 4% of communication that can create a tipping point for, for you. So learn about the neuroscience of communication, which I put in my book, Turn Words Into Wealth, and you know, lean into your stories. And then when you're pivoting, don't ask, 
you know, what are all the things that I could do? What do you want to do? What do you like to do? What gives you joy? And what is in that top 20%? And then could you double down again, just looking at the 4%. So when COVID hit, uh, as we were saying before we started the recording, you know, I was doing my uh, midlife breakthrough retreat in San Miguel de Allende, Mexico. Mm-hmm. And that was really great. People had huge breakthroughs and I was planning my Phoenix Rising Writers Retreat just around the <laughs> corner and I was all excited and then COVID hit and I'm like, oh, okay, I guess I need to cancel all my events. <laughs> so then I thought, okay, well, what, you know, what gives, what are those 20% of things that give me joy and, and uh, pay the bills? And it, I decided that I would just focus on the high end. So my business is very, um, it's bipolar. So I do lots of things for free or almost free. Like people can listen to this for free. You can basically get a book for, for free or next to, next to free. And then I have very high end clients. So I decided not to go in the middle because that makes me happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, which I think is great, you know, to actually be really honest with yourself. And there's so much more to like dive into. And unconventional life this took me a lot of time in my business too, like actually creating the thing that works with your lifestyle versus what you think mm. might work based on what other people are doing, which is, I think, so much of the anthem of the unconventional life and, and doing yeah. it in the way that is for you. And uh, also unconventional flavors, we'll put those links to for turn words into wealth and also this new book that um, you just released, which I want to talk about a little bit marketing fast track on the website at unconventionallifeshow.com. So check that out. And I know this marketing fast track and what you described, it was this experiment, you know, this new book, a little book, right? But this was, you know, $250,000 in 90 days, just a total experiment that came from these practices. And I'd, I'd love for you to share how that came about. And particularly from the perspective of those that are wanting to run their own experiments, um, places that they can look, obviously go read the book, <laughs> and, but you know, ways that, um, you know, they can also start to um, just from this interview and conversation alone, get yeah. around it. Well, I'm a big believer in small, fast, cheap experiments to test your ideas. I mean, the people who really uh, go bankrupt, they tend to not believe in small, fast, cheap experiments. <laughs> So, uh, and, and that can totally shoot you in the foot when you, you know, buy the new office tower and hire a hundred people. <laughs> and then, oh no, the market doesn't actually want what you want to offer. So I was training coaches and then I got, I, I get bored easily. So I have to pivot all the time. <laughs> so I was training coaches and then more and more people were asking me like, how did you get on radio? How did you get on TV? How did you write so many books? How can we do that too? And I thought, well, if I'm going to be helping people more with their their marketing and their business plans, I should really get an MBA. So I chose to have an unconventional life approach to that. And I got my MBA in Italy in 2014, 2015. So that was good. I came back all shiny, educated, and then, holy shit, I don't have a job. And my business (laughs) is basically stopped. What am I going to do? So I wanted to do something (laughs) really, really small, fast and cheap to see if people would, would be interested in having my help with their marketing and their messaging and writing and publishing their books. And my list, I just had a small email list at the time of about 12,000 people, but they all knew me as a coach trainer, nothing about marketing or messaging or book publishing. So I thought, well, Okay, let's see. So a friend of mine, uh, Mark Van Neusser, who was then director at uh, Tony Robbins, interviewed me. He had previously interviewed me about coach training. So he already knew me and he, he liked me. And he's like, okay, well, let's have an interview about marketing. So he interviewed me about marketing. And that one hour interview became the backbone of the book, Marketing Fast Track. So when I came back from my MBA, I had you know, I don't know now how, but I found a little bit of time to finish (laughs) that book and turn it into a soft cover book by the time I came back. And then I'm like, okay, I either need to get a job at Netflix and they were not returning my calls or I need to get a business going again. So I just offered my, my list, my email list of 12,000 people, which is not that many, a free copy of this brand new little soft cover book called marketing fast track. And it was for free, but they just paid shipping and handling. They paid about five bucks shipping and handling. And then they got a sequence of five videos, which created more value and more know, like, and trust and gave them some, some useful tips about marketing. And then it offered them a free breakthrough session. And so as a result of people getting the book for free and then me adding more value through those videos and then several uh, calls, um, my business generated 
$250,000 of new business in 90 days, not $250,000 of book sales. I gave the book away for free, <laughs> but $250,000 of new business with people who wanted my help with their marketing, messaging, writing, and publishing their book. So I thought that was a pretty successful experiment. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. I would uh, green light that to keep going. <laughs> yeah. So I kept going on that plan. <laughs> yeah. And turn words into wealth is a much longer, much more thorough and researched uh, book. But I thought it would be fun to share with people the minimum viable product and not to stop sharing the little book marketing fast track. So it just came out as a updated second edition with a new um, introduction to explain what happened next, which I just what I just told you. Well, I love all of that and definitely want to read more about that in the book. And I love just the stripped down version because I think sometimes when it's so full and polished, in my own opinion, it's great and thorough and helpful. And it can sometimes feel intimidating or a little unapproachable. Like, could I really do that? Do I have the investment versus like, hey, just run this and see what happens. And uh, I'm yeah, excited to check out both of those things there. So we'll throw that up at unconventionallifeshow.com. And listeners, if you've been digging this conversation, we've got a great giveaway coming up in just a few moments, just after the rapid fire round. So Aurora, I would love to transition to our last part of the show. So a series of lightning questions coming at you. Are you ready? All right. I am ready. Unconventional lifers, thank you so much for being a fan of the show. If you are loving this episode, please share this conversation with a friend or someone you feel it may inspire. We would so love if you leave us a review on iTunes so this message can reach even more people. As we are about to jump back into the rapid fire round, enjoy the music that has been playing in the background of my newest album that I just released called Vancouver. 10 songs inspired by love, death, transformation, and freedom. You can listen more at julesschrodermusic.com and in the outro at the end of the episode. All right, question numero uno, fill in the blank, talking about yourself. If you really knew me, you would know what? That I have moments of uncertainty like everyone else. You are a human being. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Next question. What is one practice that you do regularly that you feel sets you up for success? Oh, that's my 90 day challenge. I want to give three people three things to do. Should I give them now? Yeah. Let's talk about okay. that. Okay. Okay. This will change your life. If you do it, these are three things that I do. They're <laughs> totally so simple. They're free and oh my God, transformative. Okay. So read write and review. So I, I call this process radical reading, radical writing and radical review. So I do this every day. So I write and it could, in my journal, or sometimes I dictate on my iPhone. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be long form, but just to capture a few thoughts about what happened yesterday. What are you planning to listen to yourself? So keep a journal. Um, the second thing I do is I read every day and I read really broadly. I read, you know, the best nonfiction books about business and, and marketing, uh, but I also read fantasy. I read uh, young adult. I read children's books. I read thrillers. I read widely, <laughs> um, even read The Economist sometimes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and then the, the final thing, the, the third part of this, the trifecta, is to review. So re if you read every day and write every day, it's just a little bit, five minutes each. And then once a week, maybe on Sunday, just review what you have written and, you know, review what you highlighted in the, in the books, you know, just kind of notice, like talk to yourself, listen to yourself. And what happens for, what happens for everybody that does this, including me, is that you start to notice patterns and you're like, okay, I'm really not going to complain again about that stupid thing. I'm going to change. <laughs> or you're like, you know what? I'm seeing a pattern of, I really like these ideas that I'm reading in this book. Maybe, maybe I could add that to my book. Maybe I could write a book or maybe I want to do an you know, Instagram post about that, or maybe a little video. So you, you uh, want to gather what you're noticing in your reading and your writing and review. And this this has saved my life more times than I care to admit, you know, after my, after some horrible events, I like COVID I'm like, shit, what am I going to do now? I'm in the event business, <laughs> but reading, writing and reviewing helped me realize, oh, well, I happen to be expressing my creative talents in the event business at this moment, but who I am is a creative entrepreneur and I love coaching people. I love helping people. So how else can I apply that? How else can I express that? And also we do tend to tolerate things, which is very bad for you. It's very bad to 
tolerate things for a long period of time. And when you read, write and review, you'll, you'll just stop whining about it or you'll take action. (laughs) All right. That was a long answer. Sorry. Oh, so good. I love that. (laughs) Read, write and review. We're going to put that up in our show notes uh, for the listeners to check out as well. The 90 day challenge. It's so good. And lastly, Aurora, what does living the unconventional life mean to you? It means if everybody is going right, go left. I always ask myself, what is the least crowded path? What is the opposite of everybody, what everybody's doing? I mean, so often, so many trainers, they, they tell you how to do what everybody else is doing, but by definition, that is not going to be your, your ace. That's not going to be your winning play play. That's going to be mediocrity. So why not do what People are not doing. <laughs> anyway, you're listening to the right podcast to lead an unconditional life and, and an unconditional legacies. And it could be a lot more joyful. So good. Aurora Winter, everyone. Aurora, tell us about the giveaway that you've got for one of the listeners. Oh, yes. This is so much fun. So my two latest books, Turn Words Into Wealth, Blueprint for Your Business, Brand, and Book. I'm going to send you a hardcover copy to give away as well as Marketing Fast Track. Uh, Ignite Your Marketing, which is the the second edition that just came out. So I'm going to send you that as well as the soft cover so that one lucky listener can can do some reading and the rest of them have to, you know, get them on Amazon or Apple or wherever (laughs) they get their books. (laughs) Amazing. Such a generous and fun giveaway. Unconventional Lifers, you can head over to the website at unconventionallifeshow.com to click on the giveaway tab. Remember, episodes, giveaways are open for one week after the episode airs. So if you never want to miss a giveaway, make sure to tune in live with us every single Monday. And Aurora, for those that want to learn more about you, your work, what you're up to, what's the best place for people to do all that and to stay in touch? Hmm. The best place to stay in touch is to check out my website, which is my name, aurorawinter.com, A-U-R-O-R-A-W-I-N-T-E-R.com. I I am on LinkedIn if people want to say hello or get help uh, writing or publishing their book. And obviously reading my books are the fastest and easiest way for you to get a ton of value for almost nothing. And if you want more help, then you can sign up for a business breakthrough call uh, online at aurorawinter.com. Thank you so much. We'll throw those links up at the website, unconventionallifeshow.com. Laura, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us, for sharing your brilliance, for being an example, a permission slip of the power of the pivot. And I uh, look forward to staying in touch with you and seeing what else you create. Oh, my pleasure. I like that permission slip of the power of the pivot. That's very good alliteration. <laughs> well done. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, everyone. Whether it was a book or a video or a talk or a pitch, words can really make a massive difference in in your business, in your life, in your relationships, and in your profit. Unconventional Life, the show where I interview successful entrepreneurs, creatives, and thought leaders on how they earn their living in non-traditional ways. We will explore how they took the path less traveled, what their revenue model looks like.